Hello there, Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of seven books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity to everything you do. Today I want to look at the concept of communication and especially how we frame things, how we say things, because I think it can have a tremendous impact on our lives and on the lives of others. There's a quote that I'm sending out to those 6,000 folks on my quote list, where each week I send out one of my favorite quotes along with two or three paragraphs, how to apply this to life, and I got it from Pinterest. The quote says, you should really taste your words before you spit them out. Well, that's nice, but I think I'm changing it just a little bit to make sure we're not just talking about you people over there, but also including ourselves. So my version of that is we should be sure we taste our words before we spit them out. Now, this isn't about saying that you don't have a right to think and feel whatever you think and feel. A lot of people have grown up and been told you can't say what you think and you shouldn't say what you think. And so saying what you think is kind of the first step to that kind of freedom because you've been told all your life you can't. All right. But let's look at what this is all about. Let's look at what we're trying to accomplish. One of the things I do in my book is I have a couple of models. I talk about how to shift from the brainstem, this reactive brain, where you have a tendency to spit things out, to this more purposeful brain, the upper 80% of the brain, the neocortex, what I call the top of the mind. And there's a model in the second half of the book that is designed to, number one, after we get there, how do we live there? How do we stay there? How do we say everything we want to say in a way that serves our purpose and it accomplishes what we want? So the model has five steps. The first step is purpose. We need to make sure that when we're communicating, what is our purpose? Is it just to say something or is it to get an idea across to someone? Is it to say it in a way that they will hear it as valuable? Because when we just spit words out, often they get spit right back at us and here we are spitting at each other and there's no communication. It's just arguing about who's right. The second uh, step in the model is about our past. We gotta recognize that we've grown up with certain beliefs, certain habits, certain tendencies. Some of those are wonderful, some of those don't serve us. So if in the past we have looked back and seen that we've had this tendency sometimes to spit things out before we taste them, <laughs> say things before we think about them, and they haven't served us, they haven't worked for us, they haven't created the communication we want, okay, good information. We wanna, we wanna look at that so we're not just continuing to react or act in the way we have before, but respond in a way that is more purposeful, in a way that is congruent with our highest purpose. One of the things I talk about in my seminars is, you know, our highest purpose really is to define who we are versus being defined by the people and situations around us in a way we would recommend to those we love, qualities and characteristics. That has us being very purposeful and understanding our past in a way that doesn't have it ruling us. The third step in the model is what I call the wisdom of serenity. Sometimes in situations, there's going to be things that we need to accept before we try to change the situation, and we need to make sure we have connected to the wisdom in order to do that. So that's how the serenity prayer goes, right? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. If we see serenity as the precursor to acceptance, courage, wisdom, and change, and we start with that moment of serenity, clarity, then we can move in to say, okay, here's a situation right now that I don't want to try to change. I'm just going to accept that it, exists, it is this way because I want to make sure I've changed me first. I want to make sure I have the courage to bring my best to life and the wisdom to be able to do that. So that's purpose, our past, the wisdom of serenity. Third step in the model is the energy we use to drive our thoughts, decisions, and behavior. If we're driven by anger or resentment or worry or fear or jealousy or a lack of forgiveness, and sometimes that's understandable, but the problem is that has us in the brainstem, that has us saying things or reacting in ways that other people will often hear and interpret as negative and therefore they won't hear it. They won't get the message we're trying to send. If we choose awareness versus worry, if we choose purposefulness versus just reactivity, if we choose love versus fear, we can now are coming from the part of the brain where awareness, uh, love, purposefulness resides, this upper 80% of the brain. We have access to those qualities and characteristics that come from the top of the mind. 
The last step in the model is about responsibility. You know, we always want people to take more responsibility for the things they do and say, okay, guess what? We've got to be willing to start there. We've got to make sure we are taking 100% responsibility for our ability to respond. Responsibility is our ability to respond. It's not about who's to blame if something goes wrong. It's about, are we going to blame someone else for how we're thinking and feeling? And then just kind of spit that back at them? Are we going to taste those words before we spit them out? Are we going to make sure that they are serving our highest purpose, that we would recommend them to those we love, that they are congruent with what we want to create, not just what we've done in the past, that we've recognized there are certain parts of the situation we want to accept, certain parts of the situation we want to change. We want to have that top of the mind wisdom to know the difference. We want to choose awareness versus worry, um, clarity versus just reactivity, love versus fear as the energy, and take 100% responsibility for our ability to respond. We become more powerful. That's what the word spells, P-O-W-E-R, purpose, our past, the wisdom of serenity, energy, and responsibility. We become more powerful. We become more influential in our lives and the lives of others. So if your communication is really all about being more influential, getting your point across, saying things that people can actually hear and understand. We really want to taste those words before we spit them out. We don't want to have to eat them later and find out that they just don't taste very good. That some, If someone had said that to us, we would have responded in this old reactive way. Easier said than done? Absolutely. That's what I teach people how to do. However, I have a system, a philosophy, a method. It's in my book, Life from the Top of the Mind. If you want to know more about that, feel free to go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com. There I've got a lot of information of how to access this upper 80% of the brain. And you can also get in touch with me. If you want me to come to your organization and teach everybody how to be more purposeful, how to taste those words before we spit them out, your family or you, all you got to do is hit the contact button, let me know what you're interested in. Love to talk with you about that. In the meantime, here is to you. Bring in more clarity, confidence, creativity to everything you do, to everything you say, to everything you think. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.